What is web accessibility? Well, there's a lot of different ways you could describe it. If you're familiar with the physical space, an accessibility feature of a building would be an elevator or a wheelchair ramp. You might have been in a hotel or a public museum or some other space recently where you could have seen like, hey, there's like this shiny sign with these raised dots. Well, those are braille signs for people who are blind. So take that same concept. If you're thinking about how do you make a virtual space, a website, how do you make those so that people with disabilities can use them? So some of the other big tech companies now have dedicated groups just towards accessibility. They have engineers embedded into each of their application groups that take care of accessibility because they realize things have to be built accessible from the ground up in order to widen their customer base. If you're satisfied with your company being a bit player so that people have options of using some other product instead of yours, then accessibility is less important to the world. But what CEO wants to take that as the goal is his taking over a company? I don't think so. We're seeing a lot of demand right now for accessibility from our clients for, for two main reasons. Firstly, they see that this is something that makes sense from a business perspective, both to broaden their market and also to get the most value out of their employees. But secondly, because we're seeing an increased focus on the legislative side of this, we're seeing a huge influx of lawsuits if you're, if you're not being accessible. The most common way of presenting data or information is using a visual layout, some kind of a chart or table or graph. And for people who can't look or who can't see, that's clearly a problem. We are so familiar with looking at things that we sometimes fail to imagine what it's like for people who can't use their eyes uh, to gain access to the information. If you look under the hood of our technology, what you'll find is that we're making the data available in an organized fashion so that assistive technology can render that in a way that's meaningful to its users. New York, January, 30.7 degrees F. New York, February, 31.5 degrees F. New York, March, 39. Excellent, we're talking about graphics. Access to graphics is, is one of the more difficult problems that's come along, and that's why I've spent much of my career working on accessible graphics. Three Arizona, seven million three hundred. So, visual and audio simultaneously really help. Well, a blind person, the visual isn't going to help a lot, so we substitute uh, touch, tactile feeling. Sonification is the intentional use of sound to convey information. We're not just describing something, but we're using often musical tones uh, to convey to a listener what's going on in their data set. This method, sonification, allows people who can't look or can't see their data to access that information. If your eyes are busy looking at one part of your Bloomberg terminal and there's markets are changing in another part of your terminal, if you can hear those other aspects of your data, other data sources changing, uh, then you have a, an additional channel of information to, to process. The most important thing for any accessible solution is that it's following open standards so that assistive technologies can make use of it. One, Asian Pacific Islander Cultural Center, $104,252. Image, Cultural Center Grand Amounts, Bar Series with six bars, region. Two, Queer Cultural Center, 104000 The way we've dealt with that in high charts is we're using these standards and using these technologies maybe in ways that they weren't necessarily originally intended, but that gives us the best uh, behavior with current technology. I would kind of look at the work we're doing as hopefully helping inform the standards makers on what they need to you know, work on next. A partnership like the one that Georgia Tech has with HiSoft involves both leveraging the research that we've done in academia for years and years and years in order to understand really deeply how do you use multimedia and multimodal graphs and using the, the um, breadth and depth of uh, HiSoft's penetration into the market to make sure that all of those best practices and research findings make their way into products and get proliferated out into the market. And a company that uh, is established and has products out there that are highly inaccessible often just has to go back and redesign their products and rebuild them to make them accessible. And they would argue that the gain they get from a relatively small market segment is not enough to justify their cost. On the other hand, 
a company that is designing products, uh, it costs relatively little to make almost any product something that is accessible versus something that is inaccessible. If you're going to grow your company and make it a powerhouse to make it something that becomes the de facto standard for anything and it's not accessible, then you're in line for a lawsuit from the NFB or, or goodness knows who else um, because you're blocking people with disabilities from using your product. And as such, you have to think about accessibility early and it's an important thing to keep, keep competitive in a market. High charts overall is, is just taking a, a world-class approach to accessibility. And I think that that momentum that you have and just being uh, serving as kind of like a thought leader as producing accessible charts is just so important. Accessibility is in our company DNA. It's always been our mission to make data easier to publish and to consume. Companies like HiSoft that are doing their very best to make things uh, accessible, difficult things accessible, are really to be appreciated.